Hey everyone, welcome to another Pixel Geek live stream. I'm your host, Nelson. Thank you for joining me this weekend. Again, we made it to Saturday and we're all here. Thank you all so, so much. Hope you're all staying healthy and safe, masking up and doing what you can uh, to help one another, all right, during these times. So, um, like I, how I always start these streams, I want to say hi to everyone who's in the live chat right now. And so far, the uh, first one in the door is Brandon. Welcome, Brandon. What happened to my stream? Everyone okay? Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, our guest is still on, on there. Cool. And my live stream is still going i hope let me check everything because my stream labs just crashed out of nowhere okay we're good we're good you froze for a minute all right we're good we're back uh hello brandon hello colleen pablo is back penny is back yay sarah no socks thank you so much for your help with these um brian welcome uh yeah thank you thank you all so much and big Oh, Jason is back. Haven't seen you in a while, Jason. Yes. Yes. Hello. Um, and also, I want to start giving a shout out to the Pixel Geek community members who are helping support the streams, the community. Um, there you are. Wait, which way do I point? I always forget. Uh, that way. <laughs> that way. Okay, so uh, Pixel Pros, Yasuyuki Anto Mason, who's on the, who's going to be our guest today, uh, Yindrik, Amanda, and for our Pixel Geeks, Ash, Dalvin, Christian, Brian, Stephen, Kate, Martin, John, Mackenzie, Mark, and Luke. Thank you. Thank you all so much for your support. We really appreciate it. You are helping us create a community that is growing with, and I always say this, honesty and empathy. I want to learn with you all. I want to teach you all what I know. And I want to teach you in a way that's fun and honest. And that's why you see me fail. Like last week, I still need to figure out how to do that automation. And I failed. But um, yeah, that's honesty and empathy for you. So what are we doing today on the stream? Well, as you saw with the title, how Edgar Allen redesigned Excel.com. So Edgar Allen is not just one person. It's actually an agency in uh, Atlanta who uh, redesigned a huge website for a huge investment firm called Excel. And if you didn't hear the news from last summer, not the 2019, summer of 2019, when Webflow got a Series A $72 million funding, round of funding from Excel. I mean, that's amazing, you know, to, for them to help Excel the... <laughs> Okay, they probably get those jokes all the time, but help Excel Webflow to do great things uh, like the no-code conference that happened. And, you know, if the pandemic didn't happen, we would have had another no-code. And, man, oh, that would have been fun. But without further ado, let me bring in our guest to help us understand what it took to make that redesign happen. So one of the founders of Edgar Allen, the agency, we have Mason. Uh, oops, let's see here. Can I pin you? There we go. Yay, Mason. How you doing? Hello. Great. How are you? So excited to be here. So thanks for having me on. Yeah. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. Um, the first time I, uh, uh, I heard about Edgar Allen uh, was when... Uh, your team was doing or, or hosting, helping host a Webflow meetup in Atlanta. And it was <laughs> with, um, oh, I forgot the gentleman's name. Do you remember the name? It starts with Denny. Oh, yeah, with Denny. Yeah, um, we've been hosting meetups uh, for quite a while. I think we hosted one of the first ones um, and Barrett, uh, he called in and um, it was when I think Interactions 2 maybe launched. Um, and so, yeah, it's been great to just kind of grow up alongside the community. You know, we're a small group, 
um, you know, small for an agency, you know, on maybe the larger side for a, a web flow agency, but, um, yeah, just every day kind of trying to learn something new and, um, the spirit within the community is really one of the things that's, uh, you know, kept us going and, um, and also just <clears throat> a little bit of a shout out to the team. Uh, I often say that, you know, we, we came originally for the product, but we stayed for the support team. So I know you work on the support uh, yeah. side of things. And so, um, but I think that overall support, uh, you know, from, from everyone, cause we're always, uh, even within our work on a day-to-day -day basis, like running into something where, um, you know, we're, we're kind of going to the limits of what's, what's the kind of full capacities of the tool. And that's both fun, but it can also be, you know, it creates its own challenges. Oh yeah. I mean, like I always say there, um, every software has a limitation. There is no yep. one software for every use case. If yep. there was, then everyone would be using it, you know, it wouldn't sure. be so <laughs> fragmented, but yeah, the, the fact that it can get you and your team to create some beautiful pieces of art, basically it, it mm -hmm. is art when it comes to at, at the end of it. But, um, before we get into, uh, Excel.com, uh, how did you and your team first find Webflow? And what were you doing before uh, building with Webflow? Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I've been building on the internet since '97, which is quite a while. Nice. And started eight, Edgar Allen eight years ago, and knew from the very beginning that we were going to have to kind of redesign our design process to be competitive within the marketplace. Um, you know, it, it was just me and John uh, getting started. We'd re left uh, another bigger agency and. Uh, we knew that we didn't want to have like 10 people all sitting around a polycom and no one really doing anything. And so for for us, we had also gotten tired of this process of redlining, mm. right? And so before Webflow, it was really, you know, the, the process had become separated. And, you know, you had design over here and then a lot of your work was done through almost tickets and it was almost like sort of designed by walkie-talkie and you could never go and get everything that you needed. Yeah. And um, both John and I are pretty technical and we just knew that like, we're like, hey, there's got to be a way where we can still scale the design team um, and not try to just rely, rely on, on, you know, everyone knowing code. And so we started looking around. There was at the time like an AI product that was going to magically design everything for you. I can't remember what it was called. And then uh, another product called oh, it was called Grid. Grid. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. And um <clears throat> Yeah, but it, and it's funny, like we found Webflow um, and then I'm, I was so jaded or generally jaded by a lot of marketing copy. Uh, and I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, but then it was a video that I saw from um, Sergey uh, talking about how they didn't get into Y Combinator the first time. Mm. Where I just liked them as people and I liked the team and I liked the mission. And I was like, this aligns with where we want to go, which is really a, about empowering authors, right? So empowering web authors to be able to take control of their story and, and how to have help, help people have a better story as opposed to just telling a better story. And, um, you know, Webflow fit that mission and uh, it, was, it was limited at the time, but we could see where it was going and, you know, I've just been, been massive fans ever since then. Nice. So the, the, the pull was the honest story, the, mm -hmm. the honest Y Combinator story of Vlad and, and Sergi not making yep. it for the first time. And yep. uh, FYI, uh, Colleen, if you can put that link in, I think there's a TechCrunch article or something about it. Um, uh, put it in chat uh, about their story. It's a it's a wonderful, honest story. And it's kind of funny. Yeah, too. but it's just a really great creation story. And again, um, and I see this all the time with with no code tools like we really whenever we're evaluating a platform we always look to the team because within no code it's about you know it's about empowerment but it's also about kind of having guardrails and you want to make sure that whoever is behind it is just has like you know kind of shares a similar vision or that's it, it's a it's a group that you could that you don't mind hanging around hanging out with or yeah. that you wouldn't mind uh, you know being like oh my gosh I just broke something what 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 do I do yeah and um, so that's that's really where we started. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it pulled you in, and what I want to know is, and I always love this part um, of learning. What was that aha moment? Because you signed up for Webflow, and you're like, mm, okay, it's a great story. It pulled me in. Yep. Here I go. I'm gonna sign up. And what was that first thing that you're like, yes, this is it. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know. Uh, probably signed up on a Friday and then I spent the weekend going through Webflow University tutorials. Um, after probably three or four hours, I was like, okay, this is it. Like 
it, it started to cross that bridge between design and development. Yeah. And, um, you know, as a bit of a backstory, I mean, I, I kind of grew up doing flash design. Uh, yes. And so I, I, rem I remember that world. Um, whereas like Black had its uh, kind of drawbacks, like the thing that was really great about it is you could have someone working in a text editor, you could have someone working in like the timeline, you could have someone working in design, you have someone kerning type, and everyone trying to come together as a team to create a really great experience around a really common platform. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I saw within Webflow was that sort of common platform, that common playground for everyone to work. Yeah. Yeah, it's that whole bridge between the designer yep. and developers so they can talk the same language. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. R really cool. Really cool. So, um now that you're um uh like now that you're uh sorry, uh yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, now that you're a uh, you've crossed into being a Webflow professional, uh, the Webflow Experts program, and then you became a Webflow professional. And now they just announced Webflow Enterprise Partner. <laughs> um, you know, how was that How was that journey going up to the enterprise um, uh, expertise? And um, what is like your favorite part about that program? Um, well, I mean, one, I, you know, feel very fortunate uh, to be in that program. Um, we've We've, it's been a kind of on and off growing, evolving program for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to see it become more formalized, just like the experts program that was sort of like spun up and then kind of spun down. And then, um, you know, over the summer it was spun up. And I'm, I'm really grateful because, uh, I mean, we as an agency, we hit challenges in when COVID hit. Um, you know, we had almost, we had three quarters of our 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 clients go on pause because they were being financially hit. Yeah, And it was through Webflow and our work that we've been doing in Webflow where we spun up basically within this span of about 60 days, um, a whole other sec a segment of work. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it was through the experts program, but it was also kind of through our, uh, or just kind of, you know, uh, awareness within the community. Um, but, you know, I think that it's the thing that I'm most excited about is that for a long time, a, a headwind that we've had to face is that people haven't taken the platform seriously. And they've thought like, oh, it's just it's just a toy. It's just like yeah. a, like like, you know, it, it's almost so accessible that people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I need Adobe Experience Manager. And it's like, well, why did you, you know, this is why I don't have hair. I pulled it all out trying to work with an <laughs> AEM, you know, and uh and, I, and I still now, have my hair. I used that for a year uh, at yeah. a company I used to work for. And um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's so I mean, it's like, it's like, wow, if you want to hire a, you know, an army of consultants to come in and write Java, so you can go in and have like a really basic component, like, knock yourselves out. Yeah. And I, I you know, the thing that I've seen is like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working with Webflow on the other side. And in fact, like, we've done a few AEM projects where we will go and do the design in Figma, the presentation layer in Webflow, export out the Webflow uh, HTML, and then like hand connect that into AEM. It's oh. a horrible process, but again, like, you know, the client's on AEM and that's yeah. what they want. And so there we go. It's um, that big word. Yeah, yeah. Legacy. So like, <laughs> legacy and also just like enterprise software. So yeah. um, I'm excited to see that like Webflow is kind of pushing out there and taking themselves more seriously, yeah. making the investment in what I see is like, you know, being able to have the security layers that these companies are going to want to see, like yeah. the SOC 2 and, you know, all this other sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, really just let, you know, those marketing teams have that empowerment that they need to, you know, to own their web, to be able to kind of build better. Yeah. And um, so that's, that's probably the most exciting thing. There's still a lot of work to be done within that program. Um, you know, we're on the the sort of front line of the the sales process, kind of advocating for the program yeah. and and the platform. Um, and we have, you know, quite a few clients that are very interested and 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 want to be able to you know kind of move over. Yeah. Uh, so that it it's just been you know great to see and 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 very excited. And and good on you and your team for making changes really quickly and yeah. uh, staying afloat because like uh, at the beginning of all this uh, of the pandemic like it was just very sad to see like agency yeah. close after close and designers and developers like hey if you know of anyone who's hiring you know um, it's uh, it, I, I've been there during the recession 
I was yep. doing flash banners for yeah. Odyssey Golf and Oakley and whatnot during the time. And then when recession happened, it was just like designer after designer going yep. into the manager's office. And it's like, man, it yep. is sad. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we've we've done probably the you know the widest variety of projects uh, with you know throughout our, our you know our, our kind of span as an agency. But the thing that I'm most excited about, or the thing that I'm most proud about, is that you know this year as a team we were able to avoid you know layoffs, salary cuts, things along those lines. Okay. And it's that um, you know I think everyone really came together. Uh, we pivoted really quickly. Um, it was kind of like no drama Obama. We just got to work and, you know, made it happen. So, um, you know, kudos to our, our team. Like I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. Like, I feel like if you want to start an agency, start an agency because you love to sell work and like be around amazing people. Yes. Um, and so that's like, that's kind of my job. And then like everyone else, like, you know, I'm, I work in Webflow every day, but I do all of my proposals and stuff like that in it. Um, but you know, like, John Cole and Gabby and Witt and, you know, Chesley and Zane and like real, everyone, um, you know, they're the real kind of heroes that are uh, kind of behind the scenes and just kind of making it all happen. Yeah. Well, good on you and your team. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go into the Excel website. So sure. I'm going to see here. Can I get this working? Uh, boop, there we go. Cool. So when I first saw this website, I was like, yo, it is big and it is clean. It, Thank you. It, yeah, you know, it's 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 that nice balance between really big and in your face, but not messy. And I'm like, yeah, I, yeah it, it it was uh, you know, definitely like a challenge. Um, the challenge was, you know, some some companies they have. You know, you're trying to dig to find like what's their story, and then yeah. with this group. And the other thing I'll say is that I'll speak in broad terms. I'm not going to be giving away any like trade secrets and just talk about anything that would basically be you know public and, and out there. And I'm going to mm -hmm. talk also about kind of like our, you know, the the Ed Allen process that applies to all clients. Um, and uh, but yeah, you know, you you can look at a company like Excel and just the the sort of legacy and the history and and like what they've been able to bring to different groups. Um, it's just so, uh, it, it's inspiring. And I think it's one of those kind of really great kind of multidimensional stories. And the, ch the challenge is like, how do you start to, to capture that? And so um, for us as an agency, one of the things we try to look at, and I think, you know, also like, you know, how they came to us and what makes us different is like, um, we're not a pure Webflow development shop. In fact, um, up until this year, Webflow only accounted for three to 5% of our sales, even though it was on 100% of all of our projects. And so that's oh. both a benefit to the efficiency of how we're able to use the tool, but like how much all, there's like a ton of other stuff that goes into our work. And what we try to start with is the, from the brand strategy and then really quickly moving into what we call content design. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, into kind of information architecture, you know, formal design and then, you know, web flow build. Um, and that was that was really that, that was the process that we followed um, within the the Excel build, and um, you know the the other thing that's often talked about and I think is kind of a misconception as well is that you know it was almost end to end close to a year's worth of work, um, oh. and you know not much of that was was in Webflow. It was you know like looking at you know doing a content audit and trying to understand like why would someone want to visit a site like this like they're not yeah. trying to sell more widgets like what what's the real benefit yeah um and really kind of like it's all that sort of upfront work that you know by the time we get into the browser we've solved for some of those like big questions mm -hmm. uh, and then and then from there it's just kind of like you know chipping away and and uh and getting it out there yeah yeah i i totally relate with that um with that process, uh, I, I think about web design as basically a movie because <laughs> you, the the production part is web flow. Yep. That should be like ten percent or even less yeah. of the whole thing. It's like trying to film a movie without a script. Yeah. Like you what are your actors going to do? Storyboards and costumes, and you know, it's like the whole thing. Yeah, um, the script. Project management. Oh yeah. 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 Um, and so that was one of the big things that we were, you know, we were able to, to focus on. And, um, we actually, we let the design fall out of 
of the that that story and something that you know excel often talks about is like how the you know they want to um they want to put their founders first and so uh, they want to make sure that they're kind of not taking the lead and so within the design that's actually why we went and put the the, their their investment their portfolio logos across the top because it was them putting their founders first mm. um, and that cell is a company that kind of sits to the side and is an empowerment vehicle so it was kind of like that was how that design came together but I felt like it was something that you know um, really differentiated them and you know the other part that we we looked at was um, we tried to work backwards from this moment of success mm. and say you know what what does it really mean, um, you know, within this portfolio? And it's, you know, one of the big moments of success. Uh, there's many, but um, but kind of working backwards from uh, kind of an opening bell or going public. And so that's why the some of the visual language actually uh, mimics um, like stock tickers and, you know, things along those lines um, oh. with, within, within the blocks. Um, so it's these really small kind of like signals that we wanted to send um, in different different way, different parts of the design language um, that uh, that we would, you know, weave into uh, from from that kind of strategy story into the production. Oh, that's yeah, that totally makes sense. It's it's see, it's all these little things that I love learning about uh, when it comes to any type of design or even it's why I watch behind the scenes of yep. movies, yep. you know, because yeah. it's like yeah. it, it, there's so many small decisions to make something big and that's where uh i find more joy out of uh, so yeah. the fact that you're talking about how starting from their um that company's opening bell the first time that they get to uh be here that like yeah yeah it now it makes sense because i was i was about to ask you about that like what was the decision for that uh, marquee basically because that's yep. it seemed like such an old school thing to do back in GeoCities days or MySpace yep. or something yep. like that yep. because yep. people usually just put logos in a grid and yep. uh, call it a day and so yep. that's I, I like wow wow yeah. yeah yeah so trying to have you know let let those companies be the hero right and yeah. that you know that Excel sits to the side and they should be kind of that that guide um, so yeah, that, you know, that, that was part of it. And then, you know, a, a, another part of it is just like, there's so much, there's, there's so many stories there. And so our content matrix was hundreds and hundreds of lines long yeah. and the other thing that we wanted to do and that, uh, that Webflow really allows for. Um, and I think it was a feature that rolled out somewhere with, while we were working on it, but kind of like multi-reference fields and then being able to have, um, you know, look at a company and then see how it related to a blog post and see how that related to, you know, a, an investor. And it's like this whole web that you can start to go through and really lose yourself in, um, which was which was fun to be able to put together. And especially within uh, a no code, like, you know, the sort of a relational database, but out with, without actually writing, you know, a database. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like, I, I obviously I've been using Webflow for a very yeah. long time, and uh, I could see all the uh, how things are connected to each other in, in, inside of your collections, and I could just see it visually yep. and the components yeah. that you use, like tabs and, and whatnot. Yep. Um, I, I guess the hardest part, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, is just having, I don't know if you're using Word or Notion or whatever, but having all of their content at the, mm -hmm. like imagine it all on a huge conference table, it's like, okay, where do we start? And yeah. I'm wondering what was that like when you had all the content laid out for you? It's like Excel's like, here's our content, have fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we always start with, um, so before before we start on any project, um, I'll pull a, a Screaming Frog report. Uh, and that's actually for anyone that's, you know, uh, like whenever I pitch work, um, it's one of the first things that I'll bring back so that I can show people like what's the size of their of their site? Because often people, you know, they'll come to us and they'll be like, "We have one hundred dollars and we want you to redesign our website." And I'm like, "Well, you know, you have six thousand pages, right?" So I and, and being able to pull that that spreadsheet um, is a really good kind of first blush way of of looking at it. And then the thing that we'll do next is that layer on top of that Google Analytics, so that we can see like where are people looking and what's really performing well, and then also 
of that, what are the pages that are like, you know, not doing so great that should be doing better? Mm. Um, and and the what's interesting is we can run a formula on that and then start to look um, at two different things. Um, and again, like this starts to get into a lot of ideas of content design, which I feel like, so, you know, one of our secrets is that, you know, we feel that, that Webflow, like first wave was really uh, targeted at, you know, uh, designers, developers, kind of the mix between the two. Uh, and that second wave, like, you know, I think we're, we're fully in first wave right now, but second wave is really going to be at, at writers and, and hmm. web authors. And that, you know, this idea of content design and being able to, because what, like, Web, Webflow's mission is all about, like, how do we start to make this easier and easier and easier? And especially with everything that can be done with, like, shared symbols and overrides and things along those lines, um, you know, we're going to be moving into this world where we've got like this, this beautiful kind of like you can start to set up a style guide and then you have um, chips and then you have uh, components and, and atomic elements and all this stuff and you're, and you're able to um, work in more of like a, like, again, like just thinking about it in terms of authoring, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's for us where, you know, we, we lean a lot on and saying, okay, how can we, you know, within that spreadsheet we'll look at what do we need to edit what do we need to write new what do we need to remove and what do we need to move over just full sale and so those four categories then allow us to kind of take that you know massive spreadsheet start to do some evaluation start to then be able to categorize that and then from there start to be able to say okay now let's break that down what's the user journey and mm -hmm. what are the types of areas in which that user is going to really want to be able to focus in on um you know and then for uh, for really anyone, one of the things that we see is like search is so uh, important for that. And so how do you start to set up search so that uh, especially for, you know, people that are within the, you know, at the end of the day, like all venture capital is a relationship business. So how yeah. can we go in and start to, you know, start to connect those people? Um, JetBoost was, uh, was pivotal to all this. Chris, I uh, can't say enough around his help and, and like what, uh, you know, because <laughs> We, we were pushing sort of the limits and that's one of the things I was saying, you know, just on Twitter is like, you know, working within Webflow is also kind of like working to see like where you're going to be breaking stuff mm -hmm. and uh, found some of the limits of JetBoost. Chris jumped right in and like, you know, helped to address those, um, you know, and so it's, it's fun to be able to kind of go back and forth both with like our clients, whoever we might be working with and try to think about like, how can we help, help them have a better story. And then, you know, on the flip side of this to the platforms and say like, okay, you know, this is the use case that we're seeing, you know, how do we start to, you know, kind of, you know, work through this or, 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 or understand like how we need to be able to, uh, to position something better. I, I'm just looking at the, the jobs page and I'm guessing that's where Chris Sprags of JetBoost came in. On... Um, so, so the jobs page is, I believe actually a different domain. Oh, um, oh, sorry. But so, but, it, but it was really just everything. Oh, um, everything. And, yeah, so all of like on the um, there's like a lot of the filtering and sorting, like that's all uh, on JetBoost for wow. the for the relationships page, and um, and then we do have we're getting ready to roll out um, an update uh, for the homepage. So we actually had JetBoost on the homepage, and then we recently taken it off, and we're getting ready to put it back on. Um, but one of the things that we saw and that Chris is now addressing is that because we had such an extensive um kind of like database what JetBoost is doing is that to allow for that instant search it's like preloading um effectively like the entire collection of the webflow build oh uh, yeah yeah Ooh. and so we we're seeing like a performance hit there um and what we've ended up doing is we have uh that loading separately on a separate page we're actually using the um, fin suite uh cms collection binder um, because we can only have a hundred of those at a time. We're binding yeah. those together. And then we're using Ajax to go out and grab, um, that after load. So after the visual load, then going and, and grabbing that. Um, but that's something that we, we've been actually working with Chris on as well behind the scenes. Um, I believe he, you know, we're in talks with kind of making that to be a, a native feature. Um, so, but Chris, I, I'm not trying to, I, I so incredibly uh, thankful for, for everything he's been doing. Um, and I feel like this is going to be something that's going to make JetBoost even that much better. Yeah. Um, because again, as, as sites start to scale, just th then you're really like, you know, working on the nuances of, of load and where stuff's being used and, you know, all this type of stuff, which is, um, 
which we, it, how it can get fine, but also, you know, kind of complicated. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that complication is always fun to look into yeah. and, you know, yep. it's, it's always that what's, what's that next step. And that's where the fun yep. is too. But, uh, yep. again, j uh, yeah, much props to, uh, Chris at jet boost. Um, I yep. always give him a shout out, uh, cause wonderful guy and he really yep. cares about the no code community. Um, so, um, I don't know if there's any questions from the chat, but, um, my question is, um, uh, for you to be so well, you and your team to be so well versed in Webflow and trusted to be part of the new enterprise program, mm -hmm. what advice would you give someone starting this next year, 2021, who wants to get into Webflow? What advice do you have for that person who, who's just opening Webflow for the first time? Yeah, I feel like our story isn't that uncommon from really what, you know, anyone can do. Like, you know, was, uh, like I, I started in just like the Webflow University and then from there just started building. Um, I feel like today, one of the great things is like there are definitely a lot, a lot more resources. Um, and so, you know, the next thing that um, I feel like once you go through Webflow University, the next thing is, is like how to start to understand it's kind of funny, but like almost the um, best practices of how to be building. Um, there's a few different um, kind of like atomic libraries, like kind of class libraries that are out there mm. uh, that help to start to, to get that going. Um, you know, and McKinsey's recently released one. We have a oh, pared down yeah. one that we use um, that, you know, I'm happy to, to, to send and, and, and provide to the Pixel Geek community. I was actually getting ready to post it and then McKinsey posted his and I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, we, I mean, the more out there, the more choices, yeah. the better. I mean, it's yeah, not like um, there's only one fast it, it, food it, chain out there. So, well, yeah, like you know, we 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 have um, we we follow the same we follow the same um, general idea, which is try to you know work from you know the broadest to the most specific. Um, and I think that's a good like as you're within the Webflow you know world like understand the tool understand how to build within the tool and then just be building. We also have a course that's free on our site, um, or you can just look it up. It's called Webflow for Teams, and that talks a bit about like it's sort of the why of why you would start to do that. Um, but that's the full like basically anyone that comes on like we wrote it for us first, uh, so that anyone that that starts working with us they go through that. Uh, so that they know how things are built. And then also when we hand things over to clients yeah. um, so that they know where the bodies are buried, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, that's, um, you know, that's a probably starting to set the ground ground uh, or whatever, like yeah. just getting going. Um, and I, you know, and I think also just finding people to work with. So, um, you know, I was thinking about it, like, you know, something that, that my dad had told me is like, Hey, just find out people, find people that are, you know, stronger, smarter, you know, whatever, and just hang out with them and then see what they're doing and see what you can learn from them. And so, you know, even in, in like who I like to work with, I always try to think about like, what am I not, you know, really that great at or what I struggle with and then try to bring those people in. Yeah. Um, for example, like I'm a, you know, I love to write. I'm a horrible speller, um, wildly dyslexic, but that's, you know, any email I send out, I have uh, at least one other person go and read it for every single email. Um, but I think it's like being okay with, with like asking for help, um, you know, finding help, finding people that, you know, you admire and, and starting to emulate what they're doing. And then just from there, just, it's um, as Jerry Seinfeld would say, uh, or he was talking with Tim Ferriss about, it's, it's a game of tonnage. Uh, it's just hours putting it in and um, being excited about it and, and rinse and repeat. Yep. Yep, I agree. Just click those buttons on Webflow, yep, and if exactly something that. breaks, you'll figure that's, it out. You'll it, figure it you'll, out. It, it's, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to bang your head on the keyboard, and then it, it starts working. Huh. I'm going to try that right after this stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Literally. I don't know if I totally, totally recommend that. Um, but, I mean, if you, you know, but maybe before that, like, you know, asking people on Twitter, like, we've even, within the last... Um, month like we were running into something and i was like posting on a twitter like hey i don't understand how to do this um and that's as like a you know enterprise webflow agency um like we, we find stuff all the time that that we don't know how to do that's awesome i, I love that honesty and yeah you shouldn't be scared to yeah. uh, fail in public and ask for help 
Yep. But um, yeah. congrats to you and your team again for staying afloat in this crazy, crazy year. Congrats you. In, to you and your team for redesigning this beautiful Excel website. And I can't wait to see um, the, that next iteration in you talking about with JetBoost again. Yep. Uh, and also thank you for your time in sharing some of your knowledge with us and the Pixel Geek community. Yeah, thank you so much. And, you know, it's, it's you know, really fun to be able to, to be here with you today and just what you've been building and just like everything you've been doing for, for years and years and years. Um, it, it's really, it's really awesome. And even Gabby, she was like, oh my gosh, you're, you're, you're going to be like famous. You're going to be like on Pixel Geek. Um, so it's, it's cool. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. And uh, you're now famous, so you can put that in your resume. That's right. <laughs> sort of. Internet famous. All right. Well, have a great day, and we'll see you soon. Cool. All right. Thank bye. you. All right. Bye. Okay. Cool. Again, that um, that was fun. Uh learning that you know even if you're like at the enterprise level if your team is at the enterprise level just stay honest you know and um if you continually work honestly and showing your work asking for help no, no matter what level you are in your life ask for help and he was going on about like you know always being around people who are smarter than them it's uh, like that quote um neil grass tyson saying uh, if you're the smartest person, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> so, yeah, I like to do that too. Um, you know, always learn in public. Uh, so, thank you all. Um, if you have any questions uh, or anything that you want to show off, this is the time. Uh, if you want me to review any websites, uh, yeah, now's. Now is the time. And while I'm waiting for questions and links, uh, I forgot to talk about this at the top of the stream, but I'll just uh, show it off now. Uh, hello. Yay, it's the first Pixel Geek shirt that uh, my wife designed. And it has a little floppy disk with our tagline, make the web beautiful. I have to go on my tippy toes. <laughs> but yeah, it's on sale now. We got a Teespring. Uh, yeah, we have a Teespring store. So the mug, we have a blue mug. Or is it teal? Yeah, it's a teal mug. And our shirt is on there. So if you want to continually help support the community, there you go. Um uh, yeah, um, I have plans for other types of designs that I'll be asking my wife to do. And then if she has time, she'll do it. <laughs> but like she creates um, amazing things. She's a great graphic designer. So i um, very thankful that I have this one to sell and to, to show you all. Uh, let's, so here we go. Oh, the orange mug is... Um, so Teespring, so what I've learned by buying from a local vendor and then having to ship it is like, oh yeah, it costs a lot more to do that all on my own and it's very manual and I'll use Teespring to do it for me. So that's why they don't have the color orange, but I still have a couple of orange mugs. So um, maybe maybe I'll use Webflow e-commerce to sell sell the mugs and the shirts that I haven't given away yet, the first run, I'll sell those on the Pixel Geek community website. So I'll probably get that up probably next week or, or something, whenever I have time. But uh, yeah, HG web design is 60 and learning every day. Yes, I applaud you. I applaud that. You keep going. Um, I was talking about this in the... Um, in the private uh, mentorship uh, session that we that I had with um, uh, the Pixel Geeks and the P Pixel Pros members, uh, it doesn't matter what age you are in your career. The only thing that matters is if you're learning something new every day. You know, I uh, I hope you know. Like, what I want to do is 
probably never retire. But if I do retire, I don't want to stop learning and I don't want to stop teaching what I learn because that's what I think we're all supposed to do as humans. I mean, if you look at the patterns of why people, you know, honestly write books, why are they doing podcasts? Why are they doing live streams? Why do people tell stories to each other? It's to take what is given to someone and pass it on to the next generation. And you just keep doing that and doing that. And so um, HD Web Design, I, pro I applaud you. Keep learning. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm inspired too by the Excel.com website. I mean, again, it's that perfect balance between uh, so much data and a very big website but not crazy you know you I, I mean there's so much negative space there's so much padding and here let me go back to it there's so much padding in this box there's i mean just it's so big but it's not crazy all right Let's a random person. Let's go to this person right here. See, it's just the cards are so big. There's so much space, but it's, you know, yeah. I'm proud, made proudly with Webflow. Yep, that is right. So really, really cool. Oh, and Teespring, yay! <laughs> so if you want a shirt or a mug, Teespring, right there. The, the link is in the live chat, but yeah. Is there any, uh, Osama is asking, was the hero founders scrolling logos done with interaction or custom code? Oh, I didn't ask uh, Mason that, but let's take a gander. Let's take a look. Um, so what Osama is asking is this ticker. Let's see what it was made of. Logo Parade. <laughs> That's what they called it, a logo parade. Um, I feel like it's Webflow Interactions. It feels like Webflow Interactions, and I've done one of these before. Um, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I think I have a YouTube video, a tutorial on how to do something, how, how to do an infinite marquee. Uh, if someone, if, Colleen, if you can find that and post it in the chat, please do so. If not, I'll find it at the end of the stream. Um, yeah. Let's see here. see here uh, brandon saying love chris braggs from jet boost one of the nicest people you'll ever meet i agree <laughs> another shout out to chris local san diegan uh what else what else all right well if there is no other questions i think we can wrap it up for today ah there we go we got questions pablo when someone creates an interaction on Webflow, is it done in CSS animations or JavaScript? Mmm. It's JavaScript. And, um, I, again, interactions is just a magical thing that the engineers have created. Um, it, it attaches JavaScript to your page and somehow, and, and if you want to look into the JavaScript uh, file that is included into your website, go right ahead, try to reverse engineer that and teach me what's happening. But all I think is happening is there's a JavaScript that's being added to the page and then it controls CSS in some way i mean see this style style tag being css and it's just doing a translate on the x-axis with um 
Yeah, with percentages. Oh, yeah, they are doing that infinite um, marquee thing. Yeah, I, I do it in this way, where you have two of the same thing, and then both of them are moving, and then once this gets to the end, it actually goes back, and then goes like this, and then this goes back. Yeah, like that, yeah. But watch that tutorial. Uh, thank you, Colleen, for linking it. Uh, but yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah. Hopefully you all learned something today from the interview with Mason. Um, what what I learned, you know, is, is the whole uh, content strategy. Like, I'm more of a builder. I, I love to build. But when it comes to content and organizing that, that is not my thing. So if anything, I would, if I was given a task like this, I'd be like, okay, cool. Let me hire a content strategist to just help me figure out what goes where. Because I like that last 10% part. Just give me a design in Figma and then I build it inside of Webflow. That's fun. That's where I excel at. But Everything before that, it's like, oof. Oof. <laughs> uh, 20G is here late, but what's up? Welcome back. Um, yeah, you are late, but it's okay. It's recorded, so you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You can watch the recording. A lot of good stuff from Mason that you missed out on, but you'll still be able to watch it. Um, thank you, Brandon, for being here. Enjoy your Saturday as well. Uh, do we have any sites to review? No. Uh, sweet. Then I guess we're done for the day. Let me get my music going. Mm, let's see here. Is that working? Yeah, it is. Cool. Well... That was fun. Thank you all so, so much for being here. I appreciate every one of you, even if you're, you know, even if you just watched a recording. Uh, and if you watched a recording and you got all the way to this end part, let's see here. Keyword of the day. Um, um, walls. I don't know. I'm just looking at a wall and I just... Anyway. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for your support. Being a member, if you are, for the Pixel Geek... At, at the pixelgeek.community website. Um, yeah, can't say enough. And I hope you all have a wonderful next week. Take a break this weekend. I surely will. But these streams happen every Saturday at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, just hit that subscribe button so you'll know when I go live. Thank you all so much to Mason Poe of Edgar Allen. Thank you to my moderators. And that's it. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.